guys, I'm Destiny, and um, I wanted to share a little bit um, about my testimony. Um, but first, I want to tell you guys that um, I'm only 14, so pretty young, and um, I've been a Christian for about like my whole life, um, just ever since I grew up. You know, I was raised up in a Christian home, and um, you know, ever since then, it kind of just stuck with me. But at the same time, it wasn't really my faith. Um, that got me to where it was, to where I am. Um, it was, it was basically with my parents um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I've, I've been raised up in a Christian home, and I haven't had the hardest path, you know, that I've heard about other people. You know, I've, I've almost had the perfect life that everybody wanted, um, and uh, that's that's what it seemed for a while. Um, in sixth grade of middle school, I remember I was the little popular girl that everyone wanted to be. I had the friends, I had the popularity, I had um, everything I could have wanted, um, but for some reason that wasn't enough. And even even though I did have all I wanted, I've ever wanted, um, and even though life was good and it was it was almost perfect. There, there was, there was something wrong with it. Um, in seventh grade, I remember my older sister taking me to youth, and I, I mean, I was perfectly fine the way I was, even though there was a missing link to me. So I went to youth, and um, even though I, I've, I was raised up in that same church in that same building, it was a different atmosphere. Um, a, a different experience that day when I went there because I was older, I could understand a lot more, um, and so God found found me to to click that way. He found me to find Him that way, um, if that makes any sense. But I got saved at a camp that. You know, next summer I think it was, and almost like everything went downhill from there. Even though it was supposed to get better, you know, I found God. Um, life was supposed to be even happier, even more perfect than it really was. But reality is, is that your life will never be perfect. You can never be perfect, and that's what I found. Um, my eyes were were opened to see what God really wanted me to see instead of looking at life in my own eyes. Um, I lost friends because I knew I needed to make a change, so for a while I was alone and it, it, was, it was very, it was very hard going from one beautiful lifestyle to the this, like you're alone in middle school and I'm trying to find myself, I'm trying to, trying to find out who I am and for once I was actually looking at the loner kid, instead of that I was the loner kid for a while, um, and God told me, you know, Christians aren't supposed to live this lifestyle, He told me, go make friends and go show people who I am, go show people the different you, the unpopular, snobby girl. Um, that you once were, and I started making more friends, and, um, you know, it wasn't like those friends were bad for me, but I reached out to people who needed me, who needed a voice, um, who needed a friend to actually be there, and, um, God showed me that this is, this is who I could be. Um, so for a while, that was my lifestyle. And um, it was it was going good, but God is a challenging God, and He wants you to go further into a journey. So um, I'm just gonna skip ahead um, to freshman year, which is right now. Um, um, freshman year, my summer, my eighth grade summer, going into freshman year is when. Um, I guess you can say my life went downhill. Um, I was still out of church, and um, I lost those friends. 
Um, I lost leaders. I lost the closest people to me, especially my mom, because she um, decided to leave our family. Um, but I remember the, the day my mom told all me and my sisters. She told, um, came into our, into our room and she was like, girls, I need to talk to you. And we're like, okay, you know. Kind of worried we didn't understand what was going on. My parents never fought, at least in front of us. Um, you know, we, we never saw anything that would lead up to the moment to where we are now. Um, but I remember we were all just sitting there in the living room and my dad had gone, so um, it was just us in the living room. And, you know, she she told us in the loving way she could and, and that's that's every mom she wants the best for us you know she's our mom uh, but even though she had a heart for us it, it's it's not what i felt it's not what my sisters have felt we were very confused of those words that were coming out of her mouth and hitting us i'm leaving your father i'm leaving you guys and even though those were the only words she said, other words had filled my mind. That summer, I spent crying myself to sleep, not understanding, God, why would you do this to me? Why, why would this happen? We were a perfect family. That summer was so much hurt and pain because I felt that everyone I was dependent on and everyone I loved had lived, had left me, not even physically but emotionally. The people that I looked up to had betrayed me. And I know a lot of you have experienced this. Sadly, for for America, it's normal for families to get divorced, and that's what broke my heart. But what I was feeling now, my friends have felt too, and even worse. <laughs> Just, I was very angry at God. I mean, why would you let Christians do this to me? Why would you let them lie to me and betray me? In fact, why would you let it go to the people you so loved. I remember one night, just sick and tired, feeling so depressed and so negative and so down. I don't even know what to say to God anymore. I have cried out to Him for so long that it just, it was just the same, same thing over and over again. And it was, it was almost numbing, you know, people giving me advice saying, you'll stay strong, you'll get through this, it will get better soon, but no, that's not what I really felt inside. I was just tired of hearing that. I was tired of hearing the same Christian song telling me to let go. I was tired of hearing the same negativity for so long and so long wanted it to be silent. I just wanted to scream out. But I've done it before, so what is that gonna do? This is a time where I really needed God and I really pressed towards God in a way that where I could have never found him. And um, the fact that I had no one at the moment, I um I press, I press towards God by myself, and um, I think that's one thing that that teenagers now it's it's very hard for us to do is do things on our own. We're not independent yet. We're not we're not adults yet, and I realized that I was so dependent on others, on my older sisters, on my parents, on on leaders. Because it's just you now. This is your life. 
destiny, this is you, this is your purpose, what are you going to do with it? Those words stuck with me for a while because I didn't know what else to say. I couldn't respond to God. And um, I remember just one night I was looking up at the stars and thinking of just, just about life, just about life in general. And God told me that it's not just going to be okay. But it's gonna be great. Okay, you're you're gonna live a great life after this. It's it's not gonna just be this whole storm again. And I remember closing my eyes and just I just wanted to rest. I just wanted to sleep. And God gave me a vision, and it was it was me in the water, and the ocean with the sea surrounding me with raging waves everywhere and it was almost like I was drowning away from the world and I don't know if you've ever drowned before but I remember I was really young and I drowned and it was that same vision that same feel of hope being lost and love being lost and me being empty inside because I can just see the world right before me and I couldn't reach it. No matter how hard I could try, I couldn't do it. And then there was God. And He looked at me and as soon as He looked at me, it wasn't like I was drowning anymore. He gave me a vision and I don't know if you really understand what I mean, but an image is what we see, but a vision is what God sees. And God said, this isn't going to be you anymore crying on your bed. This isn't going to be you stuck here. In the middle of the storm, you're going to get out. You're going to live a great life. And you're going to overcome this. No longer can the devil hurt you. No longer can lies and betrayal overcome you. He said, no, reach for my hands and I will grab you. I will grab you out of this, this dirt that almost just sticks with you, the shackles that hold you, that bound you. I want you guys to know that God isn't just saying this to me, that God isn't just giving me this vision, but He's giving you the vision as well. He wants to know that you are loved. And that no matter what your mom or your dad has said to you, no matter how much people can hurt you, no matter how alone you feel, God is right there standing right next to you. It's not the love that the world can betray, but it's different and that's what's so good about it. That's what's good about it. And the vision that God gave me was not, was not, it wasn't an image. It was, it was a sight to see. And the sight was, was purpose. stop here. Your old self is gone. Your old life is gone. Forget about it and forgive. Because no one's gonna hurt you. No one will hurt you. Because God is here. I want you guys to know that God is real. He's a real God and He's a personal God and God that knows how to touch you. He knows how to love you. He knows that when you feel alone, that you're not alone because He's standing right next to you. Do not be 
give up. No matter how hard the walls are coming down. up not only the walls that are caving in on you, but he's going to lift up your heart, he's going to lift up your soul, and you will become alive, and you will become awakened, and you're going to see the vision instead of the image that people have portrayed that people have set you to see, they want you to see that you're a failure, they want you to see that you'll never be good enough, they want you to see that they don't love you, but that's not a God's vision for you. God's vision is so much more than that. And that's what a vision is. It's not an image. It's not an image of love that people think is blinding. And it's not an image where people think they're alone. And it's not an image of whatever they tell you. It's an image of hope, of purpose. And finally, you can have joy. Be numb to the pain, get rid of the pain. Don't you seem tired of having it? It's so sick and tiring, and I don't, I don't know how enough I can express how tiring it is to wake up each morning and know that this day is going to be the same as yesterday. God, I want you to close your eyes and then wake up and then see the vision of his eyes, of his heart, the way he feels about you. And now, where I am right now is I'm just, I'm just looking towards the vision. I'm, I'm actually starting to walk towards the vision that God wants me to take, the path that I want to take. And even though I still have those memories of the people who have betrayed me or who have lied to me, I don't miss those things because now I have a moment with God. And sooner or later, those moments are going to become memories I had with God. And then on and on, the journey continues. But I promise you, even though this year has been the worst year for me, it's been the best. Why? Because I found God in the midst of the storm. The vision that I saw was Him. That's the vision. And I, I hope that this generation that you see that vision as well and I hope you don't give up because look where I am now you know I I, I could have I could have stayed where I was with unforgiveness in my heart and bitterness but what good is that going to do for me this is my life I, I control it I make it how I want and if I want bitterness then that's that's what we'll have. But I'm tired of that. I'm tired of just sitting in my sorrow, drowning in all of the tears of heaviness. It almost feels like heaviness on you, and I know how that feels. I want you to know I know how that feels. But there's a vision that will let your eyes see. Your imagination, it, it lets you see things and it, it almost is like a stress reliever. I don't know if you know that, but your imagination is good for you. That's what God showed me. He says, my vision is good for you and it's going to show you so many things. And that's what I have in my heart is a vision, it's a vision of purpose, and I want you guys to have that too, because it's available for you, I 
God wants to give you that because not only is a vision just for one person, it's an image to see for all of the world. So um, if you've gone through what I've gone through, if you've experienced just a little bit of it, I want you to watch this and I want you to know and I want you to repeat this and repeat this and see it over again that there is hope. Look at her, she's smiling. She's happy with her life. Not only happiness is in my life, but it's joy. And joy lasts forever. And there's a vision in my eye that I can see and it's gone. You guys like it, and um, I want you guys to know that I love you. Um, I've never had so much of a heart for people than I do now, just because I, I can relate to you. I'm not just the same popular snobby girl I was in sixth grade. I'm actually a person who has a vision.